What's up, how you doing? Beautiful night. Beautiful night, the lights came on. A couple of birds flying by. I love watching birds go by. Ultimate freedom. Kind of reminds me of growing up. I had ultimate freedom. I, I was not one of those kids that was shattered around by my parents. Second kindergarten, I was allowed to go by myself. Five years old, I'd walk to school by myself. Not unusual, there were other kids that did the same thing back in those days. Now, totally different. But back then, uh, second kindergarten, I would walk to school in the morning. And by the way, back then it was uh, split. So you had half a year, you went morning time. The crows are coming. And then the other half of the year, the second half of the year, you would go in the afternoon. Um, and I remember a bunch of times <clears throat> walking home or going to school in the morning and once you get used to that you appreciate the independence there were other kids that had their moms and their grandmothers constantly watching them you know i didn't grow up like that i grew up like these teenagers did love this cartoon scooby-doo loved it i mean these were uh you know four teenagers and a dog and they went around the countryside. I don't know where they lived. Didn't show much of their private life in the old episodes from the late 60s. But they were independent. And they went around and they knew that there was no such things or no such thing as a ghost. And they would solve, it was always a person. They'd pull off the mask and it'd be Mr. Wilbury. And he would say, and I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for those kids and their meddling dog or something like that, or even meddling kids and their pesky dog. But I loved this kind of, uh, this kind of childhood here, as opposed to constantly being watched like today. <clears throat> I don't know how kids are gonna grow up now with constantly being watched eventually they're gonna have to go on their own and I think they're gonna abuse things because they're gonna be oh there's a nice breeze they're gonna be thinking oh I'm free now I can do what I want where I always felt that way always felt that way I would play uh, when I was a kid like kindergarten two away from my house I used to end up like a half a mile away and uh, I'd roam around different neighborhoods. My mother probably thought I was in the backyard or somewhere in the neighborhood, but I was not. I was not, to this day, has no idea. I roamed around, I went everywhere. And then when I got into the sixth grade, I used to take public transportation on my own everywhere, everywhere in the city, because I was a city kid. I'd get on the bus, I'd go down to the, the subway station, I'd get on the train system, and I'd vanish. Sometimes I would plan my day out where I would ride the trains all day. I would just switch around in the subway because once you pay once, you could switch off and get, get on different lines. So I would get on one line, I'd go all the way around, I'd come back, I'd go downtown, underground, I'd switch. And I did that all day sometimes. And then when I discovered the arcade, I would go to the arcade sometimes, play a few dollars, then I would get a like a Burger King snack, a Whopper, a Junior Whopper, whatever, fries, onion rings, and then I would continue. But my father was the law in the house. And when he got angry, the wall shook. The wall shook. So I wanted to be home before he got home from work. I didn't want to, I didn't want to like aggravate the situation and be like, well, what time is, you know, six o'clock, where were you, you know? So I would get home before he got home and, uh, you know, but he didn't have an issue with me playing. He just wanted me, one time he said to me, you know, I don't care, he goes, you're playing around on the weekends, but I want you to be here for lunch, have lunch and go and play again. I did that a couple of times and then I'm like, yeah, I'm not hungry. I want to play. But I played and I played and I played and I enjoyed my childhood. I had a friend of mine, his name was Tony, and me and him had a similar upbringing. Oh man, that's beautiful breeze. I don't know where that's coming from. Like somebody must have let the gate open. 
Anyway, my friend Tony and I grew up together uh, the first, the beginning years of our life. First, second, and third grade, we were inseparable. We used to hang out at the railroad tracks. After school, railroad tracks, spend an hour there. I've mentioned this before, I know. And, uh, and then there was a, an auto parts store in our neighborhood, and we were frequent, I don't want to say customers, we didn't buy anything in there, but we were frequent visitors. We would go in there and uh, just check out the, uh, the oil, the parts, the, the ratchets, you name it. And the guys in there, the older guys, they were all in their 30s and 40s. You know, they didn't care. They let us roam around. And then one day, I love this story and I mention it often because it's a good memory. I remember my friend came in, his lunchbox. In those days, if you bought Wonder Bread, you used to get a sticker inside of some crazy looking cartoon. And we would take those stickers and put them on our lunchbox on the inside. Well, that day, my friend Tony calls me over and he opens up his lunchbox and inside there's a big STP sticker. And I said, where'd you get that? And he goes, auto parts. And I said, I gotta get one. So he told me, you know, you have to spell a word out that they tell you and if you get it, um, they give you a sticker. So that's Saturday, and I remember this like it happened two days ago. Me and my friend Tony are in the front sitting on the sidewalk edge on the granite portion. <laughs> and um, and I'm practicing, practicing. I know what the word is, I'm practicing. And finally, I feel like I got it. This is first grade. And we go inside and I said to the guy, can I get a, an STP sticker? And he reaches down below and he pulls out a notepad, slaps it on the, on the uh, counter there, and he throws a pen down and he goes, write, write the word. So I wrote out the word and he looked at it he gave a nod to me and reaches down and he gives me a brand new STP sticker about that big. And I took that and I put it on my bike. I had a red bike and I put the STP sticker and I was proud of that sticker. <coughs> to this day, I am a big fan of STP products. Just because of that situation that happened back then. And we, even when I got older, that was my uh, one and only um, auto, auto parts store. You know, I would do my own oil changes, my own tune-up, and I bought all the stuff there. Now, all the guys that I knew when I was a kid, they had long since retired, so it wasn't the same people anymore. But, um, you know, they were still open. It has since gone out of business. Out of business. But, yeah, that was one of our pit stops. Another pit stop was my friend Tony's house. We'd go in there briefly, maybe like 20 minutes. And there were never any parents, because his parents, they, I think they owned the dry cleaners, like the Jeffersons, except they only owned one. Jefferson's at seven. And I would go up with him, and um, nobody was home. He was the baby in the family. All the other kids, the, he had a brother, I think, and a couple of sisters. They were, like, in high school back then, when I was in first grade. And so we would go up there, and his brother had a collection of little toy cap guns. Back then it was popular to have a, a cap gun and we'd go blasting them off in the house and then we'd have a glass of orange juice and leave. I never at the time met his parents, never, not one time, never. So we'd roam around the neighborhood and eventually we'd end up at the railroad tracks again. <clears throat> and anyway, so we had, a, we had a good time growing up and I talked to him, last time I talked to him was uh, <clears throat> like 15 years ago. And I've only, <clears throat> I've only seen him, I don't know, like three or four times since third grade, which is my last year of hanging around with him all the time, because then I went to another school. And that's it, I've only seen him three or four times, that's it. And so I called him up one day out of the blue. I found him on Facebook and uh, contacted him. And he gave me his number and we talked about the old days and he remembered everything that I remembered. And he goes, uh, he says to me, I tell people all about our, our childhood and how awesome it was, how much fun we had. And we, we talked about all the situations we were in, the train tracks, school, riding our bikes, the auto parts store, all of that stuff. And uh, he was, he was uh, my, first, my first real, real good friend. 
you know, Tony. And then, like I said, I went to another school, and, and then, I don't know, when you're a kid, I mean, now it's probably easier with the internet, you're constantly texting each other, but back then, once you left the school, you kind of forgot about, you know, especially as a little kid, you kind of forgot about the old friends, and you started making new friends. So I went to another school, I made new friends there, and, you know, Tony, Tony remained, because the last time I talked to him, he remained with those same kids all the way from first grade all the way to till 12th. And me, I, I didn't. I moved on at fourth, and I made other friends. And they were, you know, they were good kids too. We had fun. We did a lot of jumps with our bikes with those kids. But I, I think about my childhood, and that's why I take my kids everywhere so that they can have a, a, a childhood and appreciate it and do things, have adventures, and play play games besides besides this thing. And I've had a blast with my kids best time in my life was spent with my children best time I, I ended up uh, being very lucky I, I have uh, you know good everybody thinks their kids are good you know I have good kids just like most people think they have good kids and I've had really really uh, you know a good good time with them I've enjoyed every minute we've done so many things together from day one till now and beyond, but you know, I'm only speaking about now. You know, ever since my, my daughter, my first daughter was born, uh, when she became, you know, old enough to uh, kind of realize shapes and stuff, I was taking her everywhere, including the, uh, the railroad. I mean, there are videos of her collecting these plastic things and, and building like a, a train system at the railroad. And I've taken them hiking and up the mountains and in the desert and barbecuing and all that. And then my second daughter came around and we did the exact same thing. The beach, the mountains, the desert, you name it. So I had a blast with my kids. I've enjoyed every second. There's never been any disappointment. Um, and I'm very grateful for them. I mean, I'm very, very happy, very happy. And it's been a blast. I, I can't even, like put it in words how how much I've enjoyed it you know, I'll just start repeating it now so but I, I when they were born you know I said I will not spank them so I got rid of that I'm not gonna do that this is not you know the 70s so they've never been spanked and they don't need to be I mean that I you know maybe some people have children that need it I, I don't I don't know if they need it, but some some parents you know and now I don't know anybody like that's opened about it. So we've never done that, and and I think it's a better option not to do that. But yeah, my kids have been you know really good, really good in terms of good company, and I've enjoyed every minute of it, every minute. I've spent a lot of time with them, so I don't feel like, you know, those parents that say, I wish I spent more time with my kids. I spent a lot of time with my kids, and we've done a lot of things. So I feel from that side of it, I'm satisfied. Obviously, time goes on, and you wish it would go slower, but, you know, I, I, you know, I did as much as possible, much as possible. We've had a lot of fun together, and we continue to have a lot of fun together. They're good natured, and, um, you know, I love them. So, um, you know, I, I appreciate their existence in my life. Um, and they like the things I like. They like Scooby-Doo. They like um, desert, hiking, traveling. Um, they like lamb, I don't like lamb. I do not like lamb, they like lamb. I don't know where they got that from. That's a little bit annoying that they like lamb, but you know, what are you gonna do? You know, there's gonna be something that is going to divert from you as a parent, and they're gonna get it, you know? I mean, I didn't have it, but I don't even know if that makes sense, divert from me, but they're gonna get something that I don't have, like liking lamb. Don't like it. But like I said, I had, and I think they had a really good childhood. They'll be able to judge that when they get older. But we, me and my wife have done a lot for them in terms of, uh, you know, playtime and 
in terms of uh, keeping them active and you know bringing them places to see new things, explore civil new civilizations, boldly go where no one has gone before. I know they say no one, but no man, meaning mankind, sounds better. <clears throat> and that's that's the way it was with me when I was growing up. My parents. You know, when we went together, we went together. We went different places. <clears throat> we traveled, spent a lot of time in Maine, a lot of time in Cape Cod, on Cape Cod, and spent it inside. Um, we went different places, and I played the hell out of my weekends. I, I used to, you know, be all over the place in my neighborhood playing. I played enough for six childhoods. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I had a really fun childhood. Some people say, you know what, I'm, I'm not, uh, you know, happy with my childhood. I didn't really experience one. I experienced many. I like it was just full of stuff, full of stuff. And sometimes, you know, you get in trouble. You know, a little bit too much talking in school. Let me see. I heard a noise. I was the king of writing out punishments. I will not talk in class while the teacher is teaching. Can't tell you how many times I wrote that, and I wrote it always with a Parker pen. That was my pen back then, Parker. Uh, 85, 80% of the stuff I have ever written in my life was written with a Parker. My go-to pen. Ever since, I think, third grade, I've been using Parker. When I got to the fifth grade, that teacher loved punishments. And he would call me up, he'd say, come here. And I'd go up to the desk and he would say, uh, were you talking to your neighbor? And I'd say, uh, my neighbor. And he's like, yeah, your neighbor. I'd say, I don't know. And then he'd pull out a pad of paper, put it on top, and he had a uh, paper mate pen and he would write on top, I will not talk in class while the teacher is teaching. And then he would write 500 times with an X. And he'd hand it to me, he'd say, have it in tomorrow morning. I'd go home and I'd postpone it. You know, I didn't, I didn't feel like writing that thing. And then what I would do is I would put the yellow notepad, the legal notepad underneath my pillow with a pen. And I had this alarm, I would set it for like 2 a.m. I'd go to sleep at 10 or something or 11. And 2 a.m. would come in like a heartbeat. And my alarm would go eh, 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 and I'd get up and I'd start writing. I will not, uh, you know, the whole thing, and I'd write it 500 times, and I'd go to sleep. No one knew in my house that I was up writing punishment. I think my father would be annoyed if he found that out. You know, he would be like, give the kids something productive to do. Stop giving them nonsense, which I agree with. And the next day I would hand it to the teacher, and he would immediately rip it up to kind of make you feel like, yeah, you did this, but look what I think of it. He'd rip it up. Then a couple of days would go by and you'd be chatting with your neighbor again and the teacher would turn around he's like, uh, come here. And he'd give you another one. I've done, I think I've done a few that were a thousand, thousand times. I will not talk in class while the teacher is teaching. I did that and then I had uh, Mrs. Ellis. Mrs. Ellis was my music teacher and uh, her favorite thing was, I know I mentioned this before, but the, the graph paper with the little squares and she would say, write your initials in all the squares. And so you'd sit there writing your initials in all the squares. And one thing I noticed when they would give me these pun punishments, when they, they gave me these punishments, uh, at first you, you wrote at normal speed. And as time went on, you, you were able to develop hand speed. I was able to write sentences over and over and over really fast like my hand had developed speed I was lightning fast so I for some reason it was like training hand-eye coordination and I became really good good at it they were punishing me but I was getting fast it's like they were training me to be a fast writer and my initials I could fill that thing faster than anybody because I probably got it more often than anybody and then they came up with a rule you cannot give kids punishment unless it's productive. So writing things like that is a waste of time. You have to give them something else. But when I was in the third grade, they had a table in the back of the class. And if you were 
a little bit out of control, maybe like talking or whatever, they would send you back to that table facing the wall. And on that table was a math workbook. And you were supposed to sit there and do math problems for like an hour. And I would get there and I'd start, not like they checked it, right? And then if I got to a page I didn't like, something, you know, that, you know, didn't speak to me, I would cut it out, I'd roll it up in a ball, and I'd stuff it. There was a, a bookcase there, too, and I'd fill it up with all kind of paper that I didn't want to do those problems on. But that was the thing. They would, they would punish you by making you do math. At least that was something that you could, you know, but if you didn't know how to do the math problem, it was a waste of time, right? It's not like you had a, a teacher who was next to you and you would say, um, I know I'm being punished, but I don't know how to do this problem here. So, yeah, you remember those days. Yeah, my, my third grade teacher, uh, I had a bracelet and she did not like it. It was a bracelet that I had because of the $6 million man. He had one and then I went and found one. I found it on the street, I think. It was like a tin thing and I put it on and I would scrape it across my desk once in a while and, and she didn't like the look of it. Complained one time to my parents. My parents went and bought me a fancier, you know, bracelet. I didn't like that bracelet. Then I just said, all right, I'm not wearing anything. Because by that time, the $6 million man had stopped wearing his, so I was fine not wearing it anymore. They should have asked me, why are you wearing that? And I would have said, because uh, Steve Austin has one. Anybody who knows anything about the $6 million man, if they look at the beginning, the old episodes, they will find that Lee Majors wore, not this hand, the right hand, he wore a bracelet, like a MIA bracelet right here. And I thought that that was to cover the wires up. So I was looking for something like that. and. My parents, if they had said to me, why are you wearing that beat up thing? I would have said, because Lee Majors has one. And then maybe if they looked at the TV, they would have been like, yeah, that's what he wants. We'll get him something like that. But they didn't. And they went and they bought me something that I didn't like. So I just gave up on, you know, the bracelet. I'm not really a jewelry guy anyway. You don't see my shirt unbuttoned down to here with a bunch of gold chains. I don't do that. Not my style. Anyway, it's a nice night. It's getting dark and nice breeze. I'm enjoying the breeze coming out of nowhere. All right, that's it for now. Ciao.